Well, this week at the garage, we got some new uh, kits to show off. Uh, these probably won't get built up anytime soon with all the other stuff we got going on, but uh, thought we'd do some quick unboxings and reviews of them all. So uh, stay tuned. We got uh, the Kazon Torpedo, uh, Mark II Viper Cylon Raider from the new series, uh, Gundam model, uh, the Forbidden Planet Cruiser, and uh, a runabout from Deep Space Nine. So uh, let's go check them out. Well, this one's already open with the cellophane off, so we'll take a look at it. This is a kit from 93, 4, something like that. But a little diagram and a little advertisements on the side. So, that's your main hull piece. This is the original release of the kit, by the way. They haven't re-released this one, unfortunately. It's a nice kit, really detailed. Mm. Decals still look pretty good, surprisingly. Not yellowed or anything. Uh, nice detailed instructions. Painting guide that's really nice and detailed too. So, pretty cool. Um, the only thing that kind of sucks, but not really about this kit, is it doesn't come with an interior, even though it comes with clear windows, so you can get those, I think, aftermarket. Um, it's one seventy second scale, so the person is probably about this big compared to it. So, yeah. It's all the sprues and parts right there, wings, all that stuff. And it's got some clear parts. So, yeah. Got this one for $14.95 at Mile High Comics, so that's not a bad deal. Uh, usually they're more expensive. Let's take a look at the Viper here, since we already have it all undone. So, of course, this is from the new Battlestar Galactica. Uh, may have some really nice color instructions that are done almost like official Galactica documents. It's got landing gear and interior cockpit detail. Um, nice little painting view. And some of the other kits they offer. And it's got a nice extensive decal set. I mean, it, in this day and age, this is, you know, the new standard of quality with, you know, computer generated toolings and all that, which is really nice. Uh, it comes with a resin pilot uh, for detail purposes. Get all the little wrinkles in their clothing and stuff. And a uh, clear flight stand and a little window for the instruments and a cockpit right there. Alrighty. So next we're going to check out this guy. This is of course the complement to the uh, Viper over there, the Cylon Raider. This kit I've not seen in person yet, so I'm excited about that. Oh, neat. And of course they are in scale. Some cool clear parts. There's a visor for the eye. So it's a little intricate detailing. Really nice kit. Uh, this one's going to be lit, because it's pretty easy to light, because basically you only need... Whoa, that's neat. You cut the corners and everything. It's awesome. Um, but, uh, I mean, we can get a nice little lighting kit that makes the eye zzz, 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 and all that, so, uh, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, and a nice little suggested painting app for, um, from the studio model, it looks like, so. So, yeah, very nice kit. Looking forward to building this one up. And not just painting it silver, but painting it all these little subtle silvers and grays and all that all along it, so. Uh, let's see. Let's save the better ones for last. Let's crack open this thing. This kit was the uh, shelf sitter. I mean, it was used in one episode, this 
model, and uh, it's the Kazon, so but, uh, there we go right there. Has a lot of nice detail. It's it's very baffling that they did this. It's used in one episode and they decided to make a model kit of it for no reason. There were plenty of other ships they could have made model kits of, but oh well. Let's go with some decals. Just a little Kazon Mistrum symbol. And this is a monogram, Ravel monogram, I think. Or I guess it was just monogram. Uh, now Ravel Germany has all the Voyager kits. It's weird that Ravel has the Voyager kits and uh, AMT owned all the other ones. So, but they've repopped some of the let's see, the uh, Voyager and actually these three they've redone in recent years. Still hard to get. You can only get them in Germany, which is kind of irritating. All right. And then on an impulse buy, I decided to buy a Gundam. I haven't built one in a long time. I'm not familiar with this one. It's from Gundam Unicorn. And uh, Gundam kits are always really cool. Uh, in fact, it's it has in Japan it has its own magazine and or a couple magazines I think. And uh, yeah, Let's see, oh cool. So these always come molded in clear or molded in color, but they look so much better when they're painted. Otherwise, they just look like plastic. And if they just look like plastic, then why don't you just buy the toy? And some of the toys have really good detail too, but um, it's kind of cool. Hopefully I can make that chrome. But yeah, you can see how they... they the, the, the Japanese just make such cool kits. I mean, this thing, um, some of their even higher grade ones, you can take off all the armor parts and it has a skeleton underneath. This one looks like it has it too. Um, oh, this is in English, that's nice. Usually, the, well, yeah, most of it's going to be in Japanese, but it has nice color pictures, and the instructions are really, you know, pretty simple, easy to understand. I mean, it's got the part trees right there, and um, all the parts are, you know, numbered in uh, characters, or numbers and letters, English numbers and letters, so, which is really nice. And on the back, we got nice little things, a little advertisement of other, uh, yeah, other kits, and yeah, color guide too, even has a destroy mode, whatever the hell that is, and I feel like I have to watch this anime, anime, sorry guy, so yeah, pretty cool, looking forward to doing that, I was a big Gundam fan when I was younger, uh, mostly of the original series and some of the spin-offs of that particular one, but then it just got a little too crazy. There was like a new series every month, it seemed, but... And last but not least, this one I'm really excited about. Uh, this is from the classic science fiction movie Forbidden Planet, and this is a brand new kit. Um, the Polar Lights released one that was big. Uh, I forget what scale it was, but it was pretty big. It was about this big, it had an interior detail and everything, but this is much more manageable size. This is 1 44th scale. Let's check her out. Cool. This one is really simple to light. I mean, the only thing that needs lighting is the uh, little warp whatever it is, light speed generator, power core thing. Um, but what's cool about that is it comes with these pieces that you don't have to mask all this off, so I really like that about this. Uh, usual round two advertisements. Let's check out the instructions. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend going and checking it out. But yeah, really simple code. You know, everybody remembers Robbie the Robot, and that's, that's the movie he's from. He was created for so yeah. So it looks like we got some fun, fun projects this summer, uh, in addition to the ones we're already working on. But um, never hurts to have some other projects while you're waiting for something to dry or uh, or you get frustrated with it. Need a break? Try working on something else. So yeah. 
so yeah, this is uh, a little preview this week, and uh, we'll come back here in a minute with uh, some progress on some of our current projects, so stay tuned. Alright, so we got the uh, bottom of the saucer all wired up here, pretty much, uh, minus the impulse engines, and I uh, got all the little clear pieces in there, and uh, the outside of the hull is painted, but what I'm going to do is, whoop, we're all wired up. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, seal it together, then use some touch-up paint to uh, um, there you go. Uh, use some touch-up paint to uh, fill, I'll fill it in and then touch it up, and it should be good to go. And this reduces the amount of masking I have to do, which is nice, because um, I don't like masking those little windows. It's kind of a pain, and then they leave like little like jagged edges when you cut it, but um, uh, basically it uses this LED tape and there's an LED right down here and then the uh, top half of the saucer will actually light the bottom and the bottom kind of lights the top up. Uh, the navigation lights are in the top half of the saucer. Um, and this saucer board connects down to another board that's down in the primary hull, or secondary hull. And yeah, and that's where the power comes in, but uh, let's check it out real quick. Turn off some lights. Alright, there we go, loose connection. Yeah, there you can see all the bottom saucer lights lit up. Let's check this out. Alright, there we go. So yeah, that's all all being powered by itself. Yep. There we go. There we go. So it's just kind of test fit as you can tell. That and I'm a noob, so it's all good. Here, let's go. There we go. Get some better shots of it. Now those center windows aren't really lighting up much because they, um, the uh, saucer will light those up, or the top part of the saucer, but there's the side windows and all that. We even got the front gallery or deflector dish, saucer deflector, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, and then this has got, is going to have a little clear piece that'll go over it that I'm frosting right now. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I'll show you what I did with the uh, Bussard collectors here in a minute. Alright, just showing the top of the saucer real quick. And most of this is just dry fit together for fun, but you'll have to excuse my disorganization. Working on three different projects and having an audition tomorrow. I'm all kinds of freaked out. But um, you can see the uh, bridge there with the dome. The bridge isn't actually in there yet. I'm waiting for the photo etch parts, but that wire hanging down is of course the wires on the underside and you can see um, yeah these will all be lit up from the the bottom saucer lights and uh, these lights will all, uh, light up that center area on the bottom and then we got little strobe lights these flash it's kinda cool and light up the um, little nav lights you know there's four of those on there I just thought it was top and bottom until I started researching all this, but looks you got two, maybe. Hey, how about focusing? There you go. There you go. Okay, so we got two there, and then on the side, there's one on the side right there, and then there's one on the bottom. So there are eight total, and I think there's some on the nacelles if I recall correctly, but I could be wrong. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, these are white right now because I'm using a clear canopy glue to make sure they're mounted in there um, good, but that'll turn clear or kind of frosty too. Um, but yeah, that's that. The bridge is just kind of fitting in there or the BC deck, all that. So yeah, so that's that. But let's check this out. This is the part I was probably most nervous about. So this is our one of our Bussard collectors, the front of the nacelles. And um, it's really neat how they did this whole thing. You got so you got a clear piece inside which spins, and then underneath that you got this little little mount thing, and you can put all these colored gel things in there, which is really cool. And the lighting kit actually comes with uh, pre-colored ones, which is really nice. And this is just test fit together, but um, let's check it out. Eh. Eh. Oh, people! Probably wondering why this guy is talking to himself. There we go. Oh wow, this, on the camera this looks a lot less orange than it does. 
So yeah, that pretty much replicates what's on the show. In person it looks a lot more orange, but I'm thinking if the camera kind of washes it out, which is kind of more what it looks like on the show, I think. Um, but I think I'm going to color some of the clear ones more amber and put some of those in there, but um, it's not really showing up. Why isn't it showing up? The uh, little side flashers should be flashing. I don't see them flashing. I will figure that out. Oh, there's, there they go. There's one. You can kind of see it. Hmm, that's weird. Now oh, let me go check this out. Well, it looks like I'm having some kind of power problem because I detached everything but this one circuit and now they're flashing a little bit more but before they weren't really doing it at all so got to figure out what the problem is. Um, anyway, I mean, it's it's really neat. I've heard of some problems, but I don't know if this is one of the problems people have had, but that's how that works. Just spins that. Pretty cool. And then these, like, flash... Well, these ones stay on, but then these ones are supposed to flash, but only a couple of them are flashing for some reason, so I will have to uncover the secret of why this is. This is not good. <sighs> Pains me to even film this. It's so embarrassing. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, so that's that. It doesn't. I mean, they were all working fine earlier, of course, when I go to film it. But um, checked all the wires. Nothing's touching that it shouldn't be or anything like that. So I'll figure out what it is. What well, seems odd, but I mean, it should. You know, it, it's kind of weird if it like gets you know, all hooked up and then there's not enough power, but I don't know, that doesn't seem like that should be the problem, but I guess I will find out. Anyway, but they kind of work. At least they spin. You get to see that. That's pretty cool how they achieved that effect. And it looks really close to the uh, TV show one. And I'll show you this real quick, too. You can see this through here, maybe. Yeah. This isn't done yet, but uh, you can see these Need a little bit more light blocking on some of the windows. But, um, yeah. That is, uh, that's unfortunate. I appear to be leaking. That's nice. That's nice. Anyway, so there you go. Pretty cool. Um, also got another really nifty item um, from, uh, let's see, G Factor Models. And this is a copper and aluminum deflector dish. This part's the the uh, kit included piece, painted copper. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really nice. Um, the only thing I have to paint is some of the details on this, and it's pretty good to go. Although I could use a little bit of polishing and stuff. I don't know if the camera and a little undenting. <laughs> so, but yeah, really cool item to just add that extra extra touch. So anyway, uh, that's all I got for right now. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back with probably some closing thoughts here in a minute and a couple other things we've been working on. All right, so here we're trying to figure out what's going on with this thing. So at 12 volts, which is what it should be, according to this, maybe. I don't know if that's visible. Anyway, the bottom one says 12 volts. 12 volts. And... Um, this is what I get at 12 volts. I got one thing flashing, but if I hazardly move it up to... Whoa, not that much. Let's use the uh, short one. If I move it up to 3, then they almost work. You gotta go to 4. There we go. Now they all work. So I'm not sure what's going on with this thing. Because it worked fine before, so I don't know if something crapped out, or I'm dumb and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> which is possible, since I've never lit a model like this before. Um, but, yeah, if anybody has any... Oh, see, now it doesn't want to do it either. Now it's having a fit. So I have no idea what's going on. See, so yeah, I bring it back down to 12, and now it just kind of flashes. And it's not hooked up to anything except for this thing, so... Yeah.
snag. I don't know if this is the round two problem people are talking about, or the problem with the kit, but and I have like an early version, but I don't know, it's kind of weird. Worked for a while, and it was glorious. Look at that. Look how cool that is. Well, sort of half cool. So, oh well. Any comments about this, please post. Help me fix this and alleviate my dumbassity with this crazy thing. But it looked spectacular before. You, you, you should have seen it. It was spinning, the lights were flashing. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was really good. So, anyway. But yeah, that's that. 12 volts. No. Alright. One last look at a couple other projects for fun. Uh, the uh, 2500 scale Starfleet Battles Federation Commander Minis. Kind of like that hull color. I was playing with these new uh, Aztec airbrush paints, which I'm sad to say I only discovered recently. Yeah, and they're really cool. They're pre diluted and everything, and they got. We just got a couple samplings of colors. We got gold, copper, silver. Silver, dark gray, green, black, blue, white, red. So, pretty neat. Uh, and they go on really smooth and nice. Um, it's my Federation hull color that I came up with. Uh, there's our frosted piece. Um, there's our chair base for the Windjammer chair. Check that out really quick. Hanging out here. Uh, Battlestar Valkyrie in progress, or not Valkyrie, Poseidon or whatever, you know, one of those ships that gets blown up. Uh, the little engine parts for this ship, Cheyenne class, USS Oahu, from Best of Both Worlds. And what else? Uh, this little guy right here, little 2500 scale Romulan Bird of Prey. That checked out. That is a nice model, by the way. If you haven't picked up this set, you're you're missing out. Uh, they're so simple and really nice quality. Um, the other thing I was kind of disappointed in is this is just a repop of the kit uh, that they had before. I was hoping they'd redo it like they did the uh, Motion Picture Enterprise in that other set, which I can't find for some reason, but I can find tons of these. And check this also out real quick. Companion Klingon Battle Cruiser in the progress of being puttied. And the Enterprise is hanging out in several locations. <laughs> there she is. All moved out of the way. Yeah, because it's like, it's kind of put together in this awkward way. If you put them in as the pegs, then it doesn't line up. It's kind of shifted down. So, you kind of have to cut out the pegs on the inside. And then this is kind of a weird filling. Wow, what is with the camera? Weird filling thing right around this area. I mean, it's, can't really, it's hard to do anything else with that, but there's the saucer. And shoes. Primered saucer. Which, um, yeah, and this had a lot of detail, like really inaccurate windows on the side that were ginormous, but. Those have to all be sanded off in this guy, too. Um, and add a little angle to it. Otherwise, it's just flat. It turned out okay. I was seeing... It's some more filling I think I need to do on it. But, um... Yeah. That's the enterprise. All to scale. Pretty nifty. And, uh... I don't know. That's pretty much it that we've been working on. Um, looked to worked a little more on the uh, Forbidden Planet Cruiser. Hanging out here. There's the top part, bottom, and the uh, top saucer. So, pretty cool. Oh, and uh, here's the gray parts for the Enterprise. And some clears. Uh, we ordered the um, Photo Etch set, which is going to be nice, and which is like this metal parts, which are kind of cool. Um, they accidentally sent us the wrong one, but uh, the guys over at Paragraphics are awesome and sent the other one out immediately, so we got to send the other one back. They, they sent us the refit supplemental pack instead of the toss one, 
So, oops. Um, but I was thinking, you know, I kind of, I'm kind of going to need that anyway. But not yet, not yet. Anyway, yeah, you go on there. There's the uh, Enterprise in um, low budget dry dock. Yep. That is about it for us here at the garage. Um, got a couple more kits. We had a sale at the brass. And uh, picked up a couple more things for future projects. So kind of neat. Um, my friend Guy got me back into real space, which seemed odd. But I was like, yeah, we'll just go with it. Um, picked up another neat Gundam kit. Now, I'm not familiar with this Gundam Unicorn, but... It's kind of neat, because I like the Zaku Sniper. I was always a fan of the Xeon designs. I like both of them. Who am I kidding? Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Let's look at these over here. And check out the hull color that I picked for the, well, hull. And check that out. And these are... These will go through the same process, be lit, add all the parts, little things that go in it, and then um, get sealed up, and then we'll just touch up paint the edges and everything, which will be neat. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, check out this cool Bandai refit that I was playing with earlier today. What was that? Um, Bandai did a kick-ass job on this ship. Look at that. That is cool. I wish it could have been colored pearlescent like the motion picture ship, but oh well. And it lights up and everything. Pretty cool. It has some kind of weird things like that is taped to hide the wires. It's kind of clever, but it's kind of weird at the same time. Um, but yeah. Overall, really cool job. I think these are probably still around a hundred bucks ish, maybe a little more, but like Voyager, whoo, good luck, three hundred bucks is the last one I saw. Uh, NX-01's a little cheaper, and the enterprise E's, I think around a hundred too. So, yeah, oh, there we go. Check that out a little more. Eh, nope. I'd rather look at the background, I guess. Um, what else? Yeah, it's really messy here. Need to do a cleanup day. Yeah, check out the Reliant really quick. Wow, those look way darker on camera. <laughs> In progress. Yeah. Still need to add the planetary sensor and some more photo etch parts for the impulse core thing whatever it is warp core whatever that you know thing is that's on the ship and look at the refit taped together just because and uh, brought those guys up for paint reference and for fun and when I get bored I can fly them around <laughs> but uh, yeah that's pretty much all I got um, hopefully next time we'll come up with a nicely working set of Bussard collectors that all the lights work and um, yeah that's pretty much all I got and we'll we'll have some more updates uh, the Forbidden Planet Cruiser should be done we'll have the Enterprise the little Enterprise done and the Klingon Battle Cruiser and the Romulan Warbird all with little decals and um, more progress on the Enterprise and then we'll hopefully get started on some of the other projects the uh, Cylon Raider and the Viper so, look forward to that. Thanks for watching, and uh, take care.